and be a keynote. So I tried to broaden it to cover some more, more of the uh, general aspects of uh, some of the activities that we've done. IRIS, uh, it's a very, it stands for something very long, but the last word is seismology. So we're very specifically uh, seismology, but that said, we've developed uh, models that manage almost any kind of time series data, and we do have about three dozen different kinds of observations other than just seismic. So I think, but I think the principles I want to talk about today are, are generic. So uh, first of all, I want, I'm going to talk with this, I'm going to talk about uh, the collaborators in this, I can barely read it from here, so you probably can't either. I'm not going to name names, I'm just going to talk about organizations. From the United States, the, the groups that have been involved in this have been IRIS and the National, uh, I'm sorry, the Northern California Earthquake Data Center at the University of California, Berkeley, and also the National uh, Earthquake Information Center, which is part of the U.S. Geological Survey in Golden, Colorado. And then we have uh, many European collaborators in this. We have data uh, participants from RECIF, the French National Network, Orpheus, which is a European data center that manages data for, throughout Europe, uh, the Swiss from Zurich, uh, the Italians from INGV in Rome, uh, Geophone uh, in Germany, I think Michael, you're from the same uh, GFZ organization, and then the International Seismological Center in the United Kingdom uh, is very similar to, in uh, function as what the NEIC does. And we also have uh, a project I'm going to talk about is EarthCube as well, which is a big National Science Foundation effort inside the uni United States initially. But uh, our partners there are UNAPCO, Columbia University, UNIDATA, which is Atmospheric Sciences, um, uh, the San Diego Supercomputer, and Caltech. And we also are working with two of the other building block proposals in there, the b uh, uh brokering approach, which Sir Jonah calls us the PI on, and Synergy, which is a registration service. Yet another registration service. But I wanted to give credit to everybody that's uh, involved in be what's behind this talk. So my, my uh, key points that I want to cover are <clears throat> core funding for IRIS comes from a very large proposal, a five-year uh, cooperative agreement with the National Science Foundation that's several tens of million dollars in size in size, about 25 million of that is dedicated to data management uh, uh, within IRIS. We also have an activity for federating services across uh, seismological data centers around the globe that I think is relevant to any domain. It's just how we did it in seismology. And that was a project called Copius, cooperation between Europe and the United States. And what we want to do is standardize access. So you really access the information that's held at these various centers in the same way. And so I call that vertical integration within a domain in seismology. Then I want to turn and talk about horizontal integration, where we actually are working on ways of integrating data across our sciences, very different domains, not just seismology. Um, and we're doing that by deploying somewhat, and I put quotes around it, standardized web services which is a very uh, lightweight, loosely coupled mechanism to uh, allow access to multiple disciplinary data sets. And then I'll talk a little bit about brokering, uh, b cubed and Synergy. So first talking about what we did inside seismology, and I think it's a success story. The, we, we started by saying we need some key services. One is how do you provide time series from very data, various data centers using the same techniques, web-based, web service-based web service techniques. How do you get the metadata behind that, that's relative to these various time series, which we call a station service? And it's where are the stations, what kinds, of, what kinds of instrumentation, when were they operating, things like that. And also a service that returns information about earthquakes and events, uh, catalog information about when seismic events or nuclear tests or explosions uh, occur. And we, we did this by working with an international group called the International Federation of Digital Seismograph Networks. And there were two working groups already established there. This is a group that's been working since the late 1980s trying to coordinate formats and protocols to share data internationally. And what we did was we extended this to more modern techniques using XML-based standards that are vetted by the FDSM. And calling conventions, how do you actually interact with each data center, and making that standardized across the domains. We have a long history of working together since the late 80s 
uh, and developing formats and working together and sharing data. And this was still not very easy to do. So here's just uh, two maps, one in the United States, and you can see we have the, uh, the waveform service, the time series, the seismograms, if you care, the metadata service, the station service, and event services. And you can see different services are implemented at different centers in the US and Europe. Not everybody implements everything. So the concept here is that each data center that exposes information that it manages is done through a, a root uh, URL, basically. At IRIS, it happens to be http colon colon I mean, slash slash uh, service.iris.edu, and then a way to indicate uh, the, uh, the version of the web service, which one is actually being exposed to that URL. And everybody that participates in the federated system adopts some sort of a, a, a standard uh, root uh, URL. Then, then what you append to the right of this are the query parameters. And it's totally standardized across all the data centers. We call the parameters the same thing. Uh, we, we have certain uh, um, parameters that are required, some that are optional. But in the FDSN usage, even some of the optional parameters are still required to be FDSN compliant. <coughs> but others might not implement the whole thing. So the concept is you construct a URL that gets it a very specific piece of the archive or uh, large subsets of the archive. So just an example of what you can do with these, just by interest uh, uh, invoking a URL with the right query parameters, you can pull back something that's related to the ground motion. So we don't just support esoteric formats like you would never want to look at how seismologists exchange data. It's very esoteric. Nobody else understands. It's probably just like your domain. But we also offer things like pictures. And you can kind of see, OK, look, this, look, this is ground motion. You don't know exactly what it is. But you can see that the ground, when the, when the energy from the surface waves arrived at, that, uh, at this recording station, you can see the ground move. So you can understand the concept, even though you may not understand things correctly. That, for instance, over here, it just says counts. Well, what does that mean? But we have other services that can expose that. That's the same picture almost, except the axis is now labeled in meters per second. So here's now you have something that actually represents a true ground motion. And frankly, somebody from uh, kindergarten, elementary schools, all the way up to the general public, and university researchers can now, we've, we've made that information available to them in a way that they can understand. Now, we expose things in a variety of things. Some are domain-specific, mini seed, seismic analysis code, or things used by seismologists. But you're probably not familiar with those. You wouldn't want to get the data that way. We have some generic ways of uh, displaying things, either as ASCII one column or two column. I'll show you an example of that. And frankly, you don't have to talk to us. You can get the data this way. You know what it is. Just by reading a header line that's uh, fairly transparent and looking at the values. We also have ways of producing things you can listen to an earthquake. We have uh, a sonification files, sound files, and we have the plots that, uh, that I showed you. So we're trying to make this available and usable not just by seismologists in the domain, but by anybody that might be interested in what did that earthquake look like at some station half a world away, maybe. And so here's an example. I'm sure you can't read this in the back. But there's a little header here that tells identifies where that data came from. This is Albuquerque, New Mexico. You have to know that somewhat. There's a way to look at what that is. How many samples are in it, what the sample rate is, what the time of the very first sample was, the format of the file, and what the units are over here in meters per second. And then you just have time value pairs. You can actually cut that into a, a like Excel or some other very simple program, and you can display it. You can actually play with the data if you wanted to. So we think we make it available to multiple communities. With federation, what happens is that you can draw a, a, a bounding box or a, select a point on the ground, uh, on the earth, and you can say, uh, tell me about all the seismic stations you know within 10 degrees of that point on the earth or within this bounding box. And uh, I, I looked at, uh, I, I uh, included data from the Northern California Earthquake Data Center, that's this cluster, from the French network, that's why there's so many red dots here and then from one subcomponent of the Iris Global Seismic Network. And that's all these other dots scattered around the globe. So on one map now, you've discovered, you don't know the names of any of those stations until you touch on one of those. 
but you do know that, okay, we have seismic data with the specific characteristics from all of those things uh, and from these three different networks up here. So you were able to discover it without knowing anything about how seismologists name stations or anything. And there's a level of detail as you click in onto a specific station, you can find out more and more levels of detail about that station, get down to what kind of seismometer it was and what the response of that seismometer was to ground motion. The farther down that chain you go, the more esoteric it becomes. Uh, and in general, you don't have to know too much about that. Uh, if you're just casually, what did that seismogram look like at that station? So the next step is, we work with all the European partners and the US partners uh, to develop these federated data centers. And now we have uh, nine of them uh, in, in North America and, the, and Europe. But we're working on a concept of federation now. So as a next step, we're developing something called the Iris Federator. We're not trying to call this the internationally vetted best federator. We're trying to show an example of how you can leverage these federated services now. And we're calling it the Iris Federator. I think eventually there will be an FDSN Federator, and we will probably drop support for ours. But we're trying to show an example of how it works. So the Federator goes out once a day, uh, and it could be done more timely. And it actually harvests the information across what holdings each of those data centers have on that given day. Uh, it stores all that information about the information available in a, in a database, in a catalog, and this happens to be in Postgres. And then the utility of that is that when you run a client on your computer, or anybody runs a client on their computer, you this is exposed also as a web service. So if you say, tell me about all the, uh, I want to get all the seismic uh, data for uh, about within a bounding box with certain characteristics maybe of the recording station. <coughs> You query the IRIS Federator, pulls the data out of the database, and it returns properly formed um, URLs back here. And it says, well, you wanted that station, you should go to the French data center. You want this data, IRIS has that, or the GFONE data center has that. So it actually starts returning you things that if you then invoke those URLs inside a variety of mechanisms, uh, you'll actually contact the individual data centers. You won't come back through IRIS to get the waveforms but you get it directly from the data centers. So those data centers re retain their identity. They're not, uh, they don't become invisible behind an IRIS uh, federator, which is always a concern. And they can track who's using their data directly. So all, all we're doing really is taking advantage of the fact that we can understand what each of the data centers, uh, what information they have. So we don't quite have the federator operational. Uh, it will be operational by the uh, fall AGU. And uh, we have certain pieces of it working, but I'd say it's still in beta. Okay, with that, we, we think we've got federated data centers, and I know other domains have done a similar thing, working fairly well. We want to extend the idea across the globe. We started with the US and Europe, and we want to go next to uh, some of the Asian data centers. But we'd like to have participants from anywhere. Okay, we are also involved in a project called Copius, and that is uh, broader. This is cooperation between Europe and the US. Oh, I'm sorry, this is, this is the same topic as Federation. They, they approved the Strategic Cooperation Board of Copius, which is European Union and US National Science Foundation funded, agreed that we can start using some of our funds that we didn't use uh, to, move, to promote this federated concept to other parts of the world. And that's our plan. We're going to do that. OK. Uh, the Earth Cube is a broader topic, and that is where we're actually, how do we extend these ideas that we've learned about federation within a single domain to multiple domains? So the geo, uh, we, we got an Earth Cube, which is a very big project inside National Science Foundation that combines domain science with cyber infrastructure, uh, infrastructure expertise to uh, work across domains, horizontal integration. And uh, I'm running out of time, so I'll say this fast. We're trying to simplify data discovery, <coughs> data access, and data usability for across domains in the same way that we did it within a domain. And uh, I'll point you to the EarthCube website since I'm running short on time. It's a very ambitious program. I'm not sure yet where EarthCube will end up. Uh, it's one advantage was that it's domain scientist-led. It's not IT-led. It's not IT specialist. 
Although there's an awful lot of IT people sitting around the tables now at our QIOs because there's money. So. <laughs> so don't quote me on that. The, uh, so what we're doing in our building blocks is we have uh, the GeoWiz, Geoscience Web Services building block proposal. We have six funded partners, IRIS in seismology, UNAPCO in geodesy, Kawasi in hydrological sciences, Caltech, Caltech works on how the, the tectonic plates have moved around in deep time, Columbia, which is uh, marine so geoscience data, and Unidata, which is atmospheric science data. <coughs> Excuse me. We are also extending it to a Ramada system, which is a turnkey system that can be installed anywhere. Basically, we're trying to deploy these simple kinds of web services across these domains, Ramada specifically to look at how you handle the long tail of science data. We also are working with eight unfunded <coughs> groups, uh, some of which have representatives sitting in this room, and IRIS will actually develop the simple web services in front of these other uh, data sets. We're working with B-Cube, which is Siri Joe and Calls's uh, Earth Cube building block, and Synergy, which is a registration service. And <coughs> I'm just going to skip past this slide, sorry. So our milestones that we're looking at are, we want standardized space-time queries for 14 geoscience data types with a data discovery client that's already in place. Uh, very standardized documentation so you can understand how to interact with each of these services without talking to the developers. URL builders to know how to form the URLs cor correctly, develop simple clients, simple services, evolve into simple clients, and we have found that a very powerful concept. And so we want standard and simple cross-domain formats uh, developed as well, and we're working on that. So I've got one more slide, I'm gonna run over maybe a minute, sorry. We wanna work within a single domain, and we found that was non-trivial. We worked together, we knew each other, it still took uh, over a year to develop this, take that next step. And we actually had direct technical exchanges, Americans going to Europe and Europe's going uh, to the US, to work out all these technical details. It gets down into the minutiae. It was not as easy as I would have thought it would be at the beginning of this project. But a year is not that bad. But most domains are not, frankly, not as well coordinated as seismology is. It's a global science. You know, we've been working with each other for a long time, and I'm sure we're not unique in that attribute. But there are a lot of domains that are not as well organized, especially internationally. Each center has developed a, 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 an established practice that meets their domain's specific needs, and they're not paid or funded to do things in another way. So that's going to be another source of inertia. And most domains, including seismology, we don't really have resources to modify current practice. We do what we do, and we keep doing it. So to offer a solution is, brokering, uh, because brokering, the, the claim of brokering is that you don't have to change anything at your data center and still uh, make data interoperable across domains. So we're working pretty closely with the brokering group, and I'm starting to believe that it's, it's going to work. We're actually going to make progress that way. You put the effort in interdisciplinary stuff goes more on the brokering group than on the individual domains. So it, it's it makes an n-squared problem of how to interoperate into an n, uh, order n problem. And insisting on compliance with international standards, I understand the utility of that, but it may not be the complete solution. Brokering actually does some of this for you. It takes your metadata, it puts it into the international standards uh, or metadata, in some instances, where it can. So, but it may not be effective in many domains if you're working on international standards, you're probably not going to have complete success because of funding. And my last slide is right there. It's the groups that uh, funded IRIS for these initiatives. I think we've had some initial successes. There's still much to do, but I think it's promising. Thank you.